I am your host, Richard Franzi. This is podcast episode number 1023. I think we have a good one planned for you. Let's just wait and see. Gene Ginsberg, who is the founder of Ginball, Ginball Target Marketing, Digital Marketing, sorry, I knew that, is my guest here on the radio show. We're all just flying by the seat of our pants today, ladies and gentlemen, as a small to medium business CEO and firm leader, growing and marketing your business is vitally important. I think you would agree with me. But where do you begin? Really, especially in a state with so many options. That's why I invited Gene, who is author of this book right here that you see, ladies and gentlemen. And it says, Win New Customers, How to Attract, Connect, and Convert More Prospects into Customers in 60 Days Using Digital Marketing Strategies. Gene, welcome to Critical Mass Radio Show. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm super excited to be on the show and talk all about digital marketing. So what is the digital marketing framework that you highlight in your book? Let's jump right into the content. Right Gene. into the book. Right into Let's it, baby. Get it. Let's get into the book. So, <laughs> um, so I use a, what I call a full funnel marketing approach to using digital marketing to uh, find prospects, uh, convert them into paying customers. And in the book, I can kind of go through just a a really quick outline of what the topics are, but we cover things like content strategy and Facebook advertising and email marketing and nurture funnels and retargeting to basically uh, connect and engage with prospects and then bring them into the fold and then nurture them over a period of time and uh, eventually to convert them into paying customers. So in, in working with business owners and CEOs to help them uh, implement the strategies that are in your book, any misconceptions that you would like to share with our audience today uh, that you found that... Oh, lots of misconceptions. Okay. Um, one of the one mistakes, one of the biggest mistakes I see when it comes to marketing in general is um, uh, when I do, uh, when I sign up with a new client or uh, onboard a new client, um, the f one of the things that we do is pre-work, basically kind of like a few worksheets that they need to fill out in order to get started. Well, one of the worksheets is a customer avatar profile. So they need to fill out, mm -hmm. you know, who is their ideal target market? You know, what is their gender? What is their age? Where are they located? What are their pain points and frustrations? And how does your product or service solve that? Most of the time I get like blank stares from, from prospects and clients who are like, I have no idea who my ideal target market is. So um, one big misconception that I feel like is um, in, in the industry in general is just trying to find that particular piece of the puzzle. Yeah, it, regardless of the efficiency and effectiveness of a digital platform, if you don't have answers to those questions, I don't know how you, you're successful. That's I know <laughs> that's it's very difficult. I don't know how how businesses can be successful without so, so really let, understanding. Let's, re, let's role play a little bit, Gene. Sure. How do you um, how do you help them to realize they need to figure out those answers without having them feel like you know they're really shame on you you don't know these answers. You know what I'm trying to say. I mean, how how do you help them? Because I would think before you can implement, you got to have them start at zero and answer those questions. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's no way to use marketing, any you know, digital marketing, any kind of marketing before you even know who you're marketing to, right? Because right. the the saying always goes, if you're marketing to everyone, you're marketing to no one, right? Exactly. Especially <laughs> so, as a smaller company yeah. with a limited marketing budget. Be very much so. That's that's always the issue that I, we come up with is we work, we, swor we work with small to medium-sized businesses. Okay. And they don't have like, you know, millions of dollars in budget right. for marketing. Uh, so it becomes, we have to niche down their ideal target market to a point where we can have you know, a small budget to start doing some testing. So no, I mean, the approach is not to like make them feel shameful or anything like that it's just to be helpful right right so that's really the approach is we want to come in we want to be as you know as helpful as possible to bring in you know to find these prospects to better understand of course who their ideal target market is and then bring in those prospects um use you know automation um use streamlining of their business in order to make this much more of a um, just a, a well-oiled machine. Sure. I, I would think that one of the advantages of an ongoing concern in determining the answer to some of these questions to build the avatar is to look in their current customer portfolio. Absolutely. Yeah, I always say that. I'm like, why don't you just ask your current customers? And again, it becomes this like thing where 
it, it's kind of almost difficult for them to realize it's like, yeah, I can just survey my current customers, go get on the phone with them. So that's one of the things we do also in the beginning is besides doing the, the when we do the pre-work, besides doing the customer avatar profile, we also do their strategic planning, which I'm not really like a strat, you know, I'm not a strategy type of person when it comes to their entire business, but okay. for me to better understand what their goals are so that I can understand where the digital marketing fits in, we do that. Um, and then we also do a branding and messaging worksheet. So, um, and then of course, uh, serving their current customers to better understand how that fits into their customer avatar. Right, and, and 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 that's one of the awesome things about having an ongoing business is not only can you ask them and survey them, you can also look at their financial performance inside your business to figure out who do we want more of? Yep. Because not all customers are the same price quality and maybe the same value. You ought to try to get the more profitable clients and get more of those if you're going to scale the business, right? Absolutely. So one of the exercises that I have them do is, is a lifetime value of a customer. Right. So we see, okay, what, who is your ideal target market? Not just like who are you, the people, who are the types of people engaging with you necessarily, but also who are they, who are the purchasers and how much are they purchasing from you? So absolutely the lifetime value of a customer, extremely important as a, uh, as a, as a tool to have as part of your business. So, Gene, we jumped right into the deep end of the pool, you know, <laughs> the content of your book. So let me take one step back and say, how did you get excited and then interested in digital marketing and helping small and medium-sized companies to implement strategies this way? Sure. So I started in the corporate space, as probably a lot of the entrepreneurs who are listening to the show also did. And uh, after five, year, five, six, five or six years or so, I decided I wanted to start something on my own. I mean, at that point, I, I always thought that I wanted to start something on my <laughs> own, which I'm sure, again, is probably a common Sound common familiar. theme right. <laughs> of everybody listening here. And I just felt that I could serve clients much better directly versus having an employer as kind of a middle layer. Um, and because at the before I started my own thing, I was working for an agency, kind of similar to what I'm doing now. Um, but I thought, you know, working directly with clients, it would just be much more beneficial for them. So I decided to start my own agency and consultancy five years ago. And, and how long did it take you to feel like you had made a good decision? Because you know those early days. You know days what? Be... I think every day. <laughs> no, it's not true. I wake I up every feel, morning. Why? <laughs> I feel like in the last year, I feel okay. like that's really been. Right. Um, I feel like I've. I don't want to say I've made it because right. we never, as entrepreneurs, we never no. feel like we make it, Isn't even though we truth? make. You know, might have thousands of clients and thousands of customers and helping thousands of people, but we never feel like we make it. But I feel like in the last year, after 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 my book, um, just things have started to grow and get and get more. And get just bigger in my business, so I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, thank goodness, huh? So, what was the inspiration to take make the commitment and to put in writing what you were doing in your practice? Sure, I wanted to help the entrepreneurial community. So, before I wrote my book, I was you know I was doing digital marketing for many years. Part of it was my business, part of in the corporate space, and I learned so many lessons and had so many tips and tricks and strategies that I've been using and results that I've been getting from um, from all the strategies that I've been implementing with my clients and my own uh, company. So I, I thought I would be a dis I'd be doing a disservice to the entrepreneurial community if I just kept it all to myself. So I thought, hey, I, I think it would be really good for other people to see what I've been doing and see the results that I've been getting and, and basically mimic that in their business. And how long did it take you from getting the idea that I should put this down in a book to actually delivering your first copy to somebody and saying, here's my book? Uh, well, the the idea of me wanting to write a book I've had for probably a year before I started. Okay. From the time that I actually started to the time that it was published, it was four months. So it was from wow. May to I launched it in mid September of last year in 2017. That's impressive. Yeah. So uh, it you know it's not a very long book, but the idea is like one of the one of the issues that I hear a lot often and uh, complaints that I hear is that it's you know overwhelm. Digital yes. marketing is so overwhelming, yes. so I didn't want to make it like, uh, you know, right. war and peace. <laughs> right. People go, ah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I read a statistic years ago that 70% of the books that are purchased from Amazon.com are never fully read. 70%. And That's so, probably uh, true. Uh, and, well, it was a, yeah. I, I believe it to be a fact. Yeah. And, and I think uh, writers do themselves a disservice by thinking that if it's not uh, – 40,000 words, and if it's not this, it's, it's not, it, they, they have to keep going. And I think most people, when they grab a book that is approachable, 
they're more likely to open it and begin reading it because they can make a commitment to get through the content. So I think it's a smart strategy for authors to write a consumable book because you can always write the second. Absolutely. Right. You're you're an expert at writing books. You uh, this is your fourth book that you just recently published. My third. Third. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank <laughs> fourth you. is coming. Yes. Very Jean. soon. I love this person. <laughs> love Gene. Why don't we take a short break? Our engineer is telling us it's time to take a a short break. I, I, I want to come back and talk a little bit more about your book and your marketing digital marketing agency. I also want to talk to you about this uh, this beautiful little article here about you in this magazine and how you got this and what the benefit has been from this exposure. Can we do that when we come back to you? Absolutely. Gene? Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back after this word from me. Radio show and podcast. Gene and I are just having a fantastic conversation here. Paul had to key us that we we're coming back to being live on Facebook. Hello, people on Facebook and over octalkradio.net. All of our shows can be heard anytime on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, several hundred former guests' website whose CEOs have been on our show in the past. You know, since we started the show in 2009, we've reached hundreds of thousands of listeners through the live stream on OC Talk Radio, as well as podcasts and the other platforms like YouTube for our videos. Simply type in Critical Mass Radio Show in your favorite podcasting software to receive our weekly guests with our weekly shows with great guests like Gene Ginsberg. Gene, uh, I showed the audience on Facebook this Colorado Biz Magazine, and in it, top 100 women-owned companies. There you are on page 60. How did this come about? Uh, well, actually, I'll take a step back. So I am part of the series called Women to Watch. So I was not Ooh. part of the, the 50 top or the 100 top women-owned companies okay, in Colorado. But I was uh, I was selected as a woman, woman to watch. There's a, a few. I think there's about a dozen or so or 20 different women uh, as part of the series as well. Um, and it's basically taking women business owners and entrepreneurs in the state of Colorado, which, which is where my business is, is located. And um, I'm talking about some of their strategies and some of and highlighting what they're doing and how they're helping the Colorado community. Okay, so this is traditional media. This isn't digital. It's yes. a print. I'm sure they have an online version as they well, do. which you were probably yes. in as well. It's one of the advantages of being in print media is yep. you can carry it around a little more easily. It says here that you are, in addition to being a digital marketing expert, best-selling author, which yep. we just talked about, you also have been featured in Forbes.com. Yep, Forbes. And HuffPost. Absolutely. Entrepreneur, new book launched in Amazon. So. Uh, has that exposure on either Forbes or HuffPost been valuable to you in your position as an entrepreneur? Oh, absolutely. Um, <coughs> I uh, have written for those publications. I'm also uh, a contributing writer for a couple of other publications, Authority Magazine, Thrive Global, and I also write for Amex Open Forum. So How did you secure those opportunities to write? Um, well, um, I think just my previous writing, my book also, because okay. of course, you know, this is a piece of writing, right? So um, I submitted it to these publications and I, my book uh, before I really started to have a column or started to have being a contributing writer. And I guess they took a look at it and said that I'm not a bad writer <laughs> since I've written a book. So, okay. um, so that's how I was able to secure them. Are you writing around, I assume you're writing around what your expertise mm -hmm. is. Yeah, absolutely. So these are different platforms that you're reaching a different, slightly different audience, but with a consistent message. Yeah, I write all about digital marketing or entrepreneurship. So that's my areas of expertise. I'm, I don't write anything about like immigration law or <laughs> manufacturing or anything. Maybe digital marketing for manufacturing companies, but I tell you, Chris. Um, yeah, and it's been uh, amazing to... Uh, put the word out there in terms of, you know, like I said, the strategies that I've been using for my clients um, that I put in the book, but also that I've been putting into my um, into my columns. I also do a lot of interviews uh, for Authority Magazine and Thrive Global for of other entrepreneurs. So in highlighting their um, their accomplishments. So absolutely, it's been a wonderful experience. I just want to give back to the community as well, because um, there's so many startups and entrepreneurs out there that really want to share the story. So let's talk about shiny objects in digital marketing. W what is what is your advice to CEOs and business owners of middle market companies regarding chasing shiny objects, being disciplined? What is your coaching and advice? Focus, absolutely. That's really to combat shiny object syndrome is to focus on, so I guess it goes back to what we talked about earlier, strategic planning, right? So 
if you plan for what it is that you want to do for the next quarter, for the next year, three years and 10 years, I do that every quarter for my business. Then you know that, you know, you have three to seven things that you want to accomplish over the next quarter, over the next year. And so in order to combat shiny object syndromes, you have to stay focused on those three to seven, you know, big projects that you want to accomplish in order to move your business forward. So uh, I think that's the only really way is to make sure that you're focusing on what's important for your business. So you work with a range of different companies. You mentioned manufacturing mm -hmm. and service providers, all di con construction, all different kind of companies. Um, how do you help them to determine, of all the potential platforms, what, how do they down select to the ones where you believe they're going to get the most traction? Um, that's a good question. I think it really comes from what it is that they need in terms of as their business and what they're trying to accomplish and what their you know what their purpose is in terms of using these platforms. So right. um, it, it's a bit of a, I guess somewhat of a custom suggestion based on what it, you know what their needs are. Um, like with any you know with any tool or solution out there, you know you pick whatever is the most necessary for you, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe some have more bells and whistles, some have less. Um, so it depends. Are you finding any new digital marketing platforms that they can use? I mean, we're we're used to the big ones, right? Whether it be LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, maybe Instagram or Pinterest for some of your clients. But I mean, obviously their blog. But is there anything on the horizon, or are you? How are you helping them? Because you you mentioned it in the first blog. Some of them feel overwhelmed by all the choices. And I think the platforms that. Not, I think, I know that the platforms that we choose for them is based on where their audiences hang out. Okay, so you can determine that. Yeah, and and that's really kind of based on maybe generational um, gaps or, um, yeah, absolutely, you know, certain, I think for like the simple, let's take the example of Snapchat. So, I mean, younger generations definitely See, hang I didn't out even mention Snapchat. Snapchat. Yes, See? I know you didn't. That's I why I was one. talking about Thank Snapchat. You. All right. Um, you know, if your customers are businesses, then LinkedIn is probably a good one. Uh -huh. um, if you're, you know, if your customers are consumers, um, millennials, then probably Facebook is a good one. So it really, we choose the platforms based on the demographic information of their, um, of their ideal target market, and then we we test them out and see if they if they're working. That that's one of, as I understand it, from having experience with professionals such as yourself, Gene, that, that's one of the advantages of using and employing a digital marketing strategy is the ability for pretty quick feedback mm -hmm. on the effectiveness of what you're sending out. Absolutely, yeah. And that's really the big difference between digital marketing and traditional marketing is you have very, very down-to-the-point analytics of how many eyeballs are seeing your content, you know, how many people are taking action, what is, how many people are purchasing. So right. absolutely, you would not be able to get that kind of information from a you know from a newspaper ad or from a magazine ad or from even television right mm -hmm. yeah it's uh yeah it's it one of the uh things that i think is the the real holy grail in digital marketing is getting somebody to take action it's one thing for them to see your content it's another for there to be a call to action that they actually that gets them to activate Absolutely. I mean, that's a big part of what we do um, as part of our consultancy and agency is what we call direct response marketing. Okay. Yeah. So there's like branding and awareness, you know, content is a piece of it, although content now kind of crosses over because you can add awareness and branding within your content, but then you can also have a call to action at the end of your content, like at the end of a blog post or at the end of a video, right? So there's definitely some crossover when it comes to content. But for what we call direct response marketing, where we're trying to have a user take an action, um, that's yeah, that's going to be a big piece of trying to get prospects to convert into paying customers. How important is it in the clients that you work with for them to have a strategy to capture valid emails from their community? Emails, yeah, we we still do that. Although we are uh, kind of a new platform that you asked about earlier is Facebook Messenger bots. Okay. So that is one that we've been introducing quite a bit. I use it in my own business, and I've been introducing it to our clients' businesses because with email, it is it's definitely not as great as it used to be in terms of open rates and results. So with uh, Facebook Messenger bots, you can see open rates of messages of you know, 70, 80, 90%. So um, as of Why now- Why is that? 
Uh, because people are, are reading their messages on their okay. messenger, okay. on their Facebook messenger. So okay. that people are not necessarily reading on through their email. So we've seen much better success with uh, results in terms of engagement. There's still, you know, there's still the word is still out in terms of conversion because it's still kind of a newer platform. Mm -hmm. So we, we're definitely seeing a lot of open, better, much better open rates and much better engagement. But we're trying to figure out if if it's the best strategy also for converting users. What about text messaging? How does that work into your digital marketing strategy? I've not used text messaging too much with um, my clients in okay. the past. Um, it is, from what I understand, also a very good platform in terms of um, engagement and open rates because I think people read like 99% of their text messages. Right, it's a very short leash, yep. isn't it? When Absolutely. You, when people so, get a text. Yeah, um, I, um, so I imagine you have to be careful with that then, right? Yes, Because you could absolutely. alienate quickly somebody. Um, yeah. alien and then there are also issues, of course, with like, uh, what the equivalent of can spam is for okay. email. Okay. Um, you know, you can't just be blasting out <laughs> text <laughs> messages. But if you are, if the people are opting in, people are opting into your um, marketing communications from using their phone and mm -hmm. and, and giving you their um, their phone number, their cell phone number. Then yeah, absolutely, it's um, it's it's definitely a good strategy. Okay. Final technical question then, because <laughs> you, you just caused me to think this, and I'd like to know your answer. When you work with your clients on a digital marketing strategy, how critical is the mobile aspect of the digital marketing versus the desktop and laptop kind of? Do you do you separate them that way, or how how do you coach your clients on that area? Oh, well, everything has to be mobile friendly. So your website, your landing pages, all of the entire user experience has to be mobile friendly. Like that's a given now. It's no longer like some desktop, some mobile, it, it has to be because most of the time you're seeing that people are opening up their email, engaging on Facebook, engaging on social media through their mobile devices. Right. Okay. Well, this has been content rich. Thank you, Gene Ginsburg. Absolutely. If someone would like to one, purchase your book or two, learn more about you as a digital marketing expert, where do you say they go online to find out more about you? Sure. Well, um, you can get my book absolutely for free. It's a PDF version. It's not going to be this version. It's going to oh. be a PDF, but you can download it immediately and start using it. Oh, well, that's good. Um, it's, if you go to winnewcustomers.online, winnewcustomers.online, just like it says, winnewcustomers.online, uh, you can uh, get the PDF version of the book. And then, of course, I'm active on social media because I talk about social media all the time. Hmm. Um, so you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Gene Ginsburg, digital marketing expert. How do you spell your last name? G-I-N-Z, with a Z, as it isn't zebra, B-U-R-G. And you can find me on Instagram, Gene Ginsburg, uh, Facebook, Gene Ginsburg. Um, I have a YouTube channel as well. So you can find me there as well. I have about 150 videos all about entrepreneurship and, and digital marketing that you can absolutely go for free and knock yourself out and start watching them today. <laughs> right. So you do believe in a content strategy. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I've been doing videos for the last two years and been posting them to my social media and to my YouTube channel. Well, thank you for being a friend of the program, a part of the critical mass community. I wish you continued success. And it's been a kick in the pants to have you here in the studio, Gene. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. I'd like to thank our engineer for today's show, none other than Paul Roberts. And our producers, without whom we would not be able to do this show, they are Joan Park, Crystal Nunnally, and Haley Stern. If you'd like to connect with me, I'd say let's start on LinkedIn. I'm Richard Franzi, F-R-A-N-Z-I, F-R-A-N-Z-I. And if you'd like to check out my latest book, Killing Cats Leads to Rats, it's available on all the major best, all the major booksellers and in different formats. If you'd like to learn how to mitigate unintended consequences from damaging your business and employee morale, read my book. I would appreciate it. Until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction.